today to your Canvas email and it looks like I've had 16 people respond and I think we have 20 something students in here. So if you have not responded to this survey, that means you haven't checked your email. So make sure that you're checking your email in Canvas because I've sent a few things out already for you. Uh, the survey was just a quick, I wanted to know how you wanted me to run the class. Did you, who, did, who did not see the survey? It's okay if you haven't, who is not? Okay, so I just basically asked, do you want me to come in here and just get up on the board with no cameras, nothing, just old school style? Do you want me to set up a camera in the room and get up on the board and do everything old school style but record? And the other option was for me to stand behind this podium writing on a tablet and projecting everything up there. Yes? I have a question. So I have a yeah. Whatever, but, uh, if you do run the camera, um, are we still able to ask questions? Oh, yeah. Lecture? Oh, yeah. Like, that's not going to ruin like, the video like that? Nah. No. Nah. Yeah. I'm going to do the camera. Um, now, there's a catch to it. I'm not going to care too much about if it's focused on the board, if it's going to catch everything, because I can't get that camera to catch this entire board and then you'll be able to see it, okay? The only way to make it real nice and you know, high resolution is if I zoom in on a space about as big as this screen, which I'm not going to do, all right? So the, the camera is really here so that if you miss class, you have something you can go back, you can listen, you know, what did they talk about, what did they do? I have like thousands of videos on my YouTube channel and I have probably hundreds of calculus videos. So you could always go back and watch one of my old lectures if you missed something. And if you had trouble doing that or finding out what video I should watch, it's pretty simple. If you go to my, my website, which your videos, I'll upload them to my YouTube channel so you'll know how to get to my YouTube channel. Um, but if you go to, not YouTube, my YouTube channel, this is my channel, and the very first list of videos are all Cal One videos. So these are some old class videos you could watch. And then, I mean, you could just go and like search my playlist. Anything that says 2413 is Calculus uh, One. So there's plenty of resources there for you. So that's the way I'm gonna, that's the way I'm gonna run it. Um, I was actually very happy to see the results of the survey. Because I was thinking that I was going to get a bunch of people that wanted me to, to stand here and write and project. I mean, that, like, in theory, that's the best quality video that we could get because it would be everything's in color. It's all going to come out nice and crisp and clean. You know what? I think my, yeah, my, make sure my mic's on. Um, but again, it's just me right here and it's just a little less engaging. So. I'm happy to see that a lot of you want me to just get up on the board and, and do, do work. Um, that means you're going to need to be taking notes. You're going to need to be paying attention and asking questions. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. But that's the plan, camera in the room. All right, the next thing I want to talk about, um, I'm going to take attendance every day. Hopefully I'll remember to do this. I'm going to pass this uh, folder around and it's going to have hopefully your name on here and today's date and just like initial in there is, it's real small just just a little mark to show that you were here okay if I forget to do this just remind me someone say hey you know sir you haven't passed the folder around so I'm gonna start that now all right there you go all right and just pass that around um, <clears throat> now this is our this is our main page for our course does anyone have any questions on how to get to this this is this place is called canvas Anyone have a question on how to get here? Everyone's good? So this is our main page. I'm not going to go through everything right now. I'll just point out the main things. We have the syllabus, which I am going to talk about. Modules, which I will talk about. Homework solution videos. This is important, all right? I'm going to give you homework that you're going to do out of the electronic book, the e-book. You're going to go look at the problems. You're going to do them, pencil and paper. Or if you have a tablet you write on, that's fine. You're going to do your homework, and as you're doing your homework, if you have questions, I have videos of me working out those problems, pretty almost all of them, not every single one. But um, so if you click on this, it takes you again to my YouTube channel, and it's broken down by sections. My homework videos for Cal One start the solutions start at 1.3, and then you can just go through and it's just me standing up in front of the board working problems out of the book. 
All right? So that is a, a well, according to my students, that is a great resource. There's, there's a danger with those videos. Don't just go watch the videos in, in place of doing the homework, okay? Because watching me do something, going, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, no, I get that. That's, that's one thing, right? I know how to get from point A to point B, right? I know the path to choose. Watching me choose the path doesn't help you. You've got to get, you've got to, get to the point where you see a problem, you recognize what you need to do, and then you execute whatever you need to execute, right? So use it as a guide. Most students will try the problem first and then have the video there and just kind of press play, see if we're going down the same road, you know? Okay, and then we have our schedule. This is important. The schedule is going to lay out the plan. Okay, this is a tentative plan for what I plan to cover each day, when our exams take place, and notice your homework assignments are here. So like for today, and I know this is hard to see. This room is not, it's a huge room. I like the space, but it's really hard to get to the, to see the, to see the board. Uh, so like on this calendar, it says here that the first thing we're gonna do here today is 1.3, we're gonna start with the limit of a function. There's some review exercises that are not required, but if you want to go back and review some things, here's some problems you can do out of there. But really, everything for you starts here. 1.3, here is the homework assignments. You're supposed to do number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13, 15, 17, 19. You know, those problems, but where, right? They're in the ebook, so I'll, I'll show you where to get to the ebook. But the schedule, print it out, stick it in a binder, that way you, you have it and then it shows when the exams are. One, two, three exams. The, last, the third exam is almost at the end of the semester. It's right before Thanksgiving. And then we have a holiday for Thanksgiving, and then we come back for one week, and then we have a final exam. All right? Questions so far? So this main page, I will add a link to this. Um, later on today, I will add another link in here that'll say, you know, class videos. And that'll be the ones off this camera, all right? That'll come later, today. Okay, let's talk syllabus. Because you're Cal 1 students, I'm assuming all of you are somewhat familiar with what a syllabus is. Every class that you take in college should, should have a syllabus. It's a contract, okay? It's my agreement, your agreement, on how things are gonna go in here. I can't deviate from this unless I officially let everybody know. So I can't, like in here, if I say that the final exams were 20%, I can't then later say, no, it's worth 50%, right? Okay, so this is a contract. It's important that you read this, and I'm gonna give you a, um, a handout, probably next class, a piece of paper that says, you know, I blank have read the syllabus, understand the requirements of the course, you're gonna sign it, you're gonna give it to me. And that way, Later on the semester, we're like, well, I didn't realize. I'll just pull it out and put it in front of you and say, yes, you did. You said you realized, right? So read the syllabus, right? Um, the highlights from this are that, first, I'm very available to my students. Um, I provide you my cell phone number on the syllabus. And I invite you to reach out for help anytime, all right? Now, the best way to get help from me is to, if you're working on a problem, you're stuck, take a picture of the problem, take a picture of any work you've done, and then send me the text, all right? Also make sure the first text you ever send to me ha um, has your name and what class you're in. Um, anyone need to initial this still? All right, so send that to me, and it's important that you send me the problem, because I might be at HEB or something, and if you say number four from tonight, you know, today's homework, I'm gonna be like, I don't know what number four is, you know, I have five classes, you know, I don't even know who you are. So send me the problem, I'll help you, all right? Um, historically, students that I kind of get to know by name by the end of the semester always do well. You know, the ones that reach out for help, and I've, you know, I've seen them in my office hours. We get, you know, we, I get to kind of know where they are on things. Those students always do well. I, I very rarely have a student that comes for help and then winds up not getting through the course. Um, so I know some people are very introverted. They don't want, they want to do everything themselves, but I'll talk about this later, like how to succeed in this class. 
So let me get to that later, like how can you do well in Cal 1, right? Uh, office hours, these might change. I've, I've, I laid these out a few weeks ago and then I started to look at them and I'm like, you know what, I don't know if I like these. So I might change these, but this is what it is right now. All I want you to know is what office hours are, right? I'm required, because I'm a full-time employee here, I'm required to be in my office available to my students 10 hours a week, all right? 10 hours a week. So office hours are times that you can come in and get help. You and all my students are, have that open time. So I make some of my office hours face-to-face -face on campus, and then I'm gonna do some of them Zoom because I have internet classes as well and I want to be available to them as well. So um, I'll let you know if that changes. That's the official um, office hour. So today, let's see what we have today. Right before class, I'm in my office for about half an hour. My office is in Juniper Hall, which is the building next to this one. I'm down in the dungeon. It's real hard to find me. So um, if you're trying to, just call me, text me, say I can't find you and uh, I'll help you get there. Um, and then, let's see, what else today? After this class, right after this class, I walk to my office and I'm there for an hour, all right? So if you're free after this class, you have some questions, you wanna go over, you wanna sit and start your homework. You can go, you can go to my office, outside my office, there's a table, groups of students can sit at that table, they can work together. We have a conference room, if there's enough of you, I'll go in there and join you, we can get up on boards, we can do stuff. But I can't force you to come see me, right? But there's a lot there available if you do. So I, I envision the way it used to be. I used to always have students outside my office. It was like, you know, five, six students all the time. And, you know, COVID hit and things have changed, but I'm hoping to get back to that where, where I'm just constantly flooded with students. Because it's fun. You get to learn that way, right? All right, keep going. Materials, you don't have to buy anything for this class. All right, so I've sent out, I think, a few emails now. Has anybody successfully got into the textbook without being asked to pay? Everybody's being asked to pay? The people, yes? Yeah? I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm frustrated. Because I, I did it exactly the way they, I mean, exactly the way they told me to do it. And so it's included in your tuition, so don't pay for anything. I'll get it squared away, all right? But do you have access to the book? Yes? Yes? Okay, so everyone can get to the book to do the homework tonight? Who has not gotten to the book? I only see six people that have done it, so a lot of people haven't. So all you do to get to the book is you're going to click on the modules, and then there's a link right here, and that should take you there. You, you might have to create an account. If you haven't created an account, create an account. Just you know, put in an email address, and that will get you registered with that website, and then you'll have access to the book. Yes? Do you use your school email? I would use your school email. You don't have to for that, but I would. Make sure you use your, your correct name. Like whatever name I have here on the roster, use that name. Because then when I'm going to give it grades later, if your names don't match, yeah. The email's not as important, though. Let me take you to that in a minute, okay? I want to get back to the syllabus. I'll take you, I'll take you to the ebook. Let me get back to the syllabus, though. Um, so don't buy anything. Um, there's an electronic version of the book. In terms of other materials, uh-oh, do I not have calculators on here? Uh-oh. Okay, so I need to add that. I thought it was here. So you need a calculator for this class, scientific calculator. Um, if you have a graphing calculator, great. Okay, you don't need it, but you can have one. There's nothing in here that's going to require a graphing calculator, a graphing calculator. Um, I do have some restrictions, though, on calculators. You cannot have, on tests, you cannot have a calculator that has what's called a computer algebra system. Normally, they, they will put it on there. It'll say CAS somewhere on the calculator. Um, examples of this are the TI Inspire CAS. It has to say CAS on the top. If it doesn't say CAS, you're good. Also, the Texas Instrument TI-89 89 and 92 are, are not allowed. What, is, I think what does it say? Does it say CAS on the top right? Okay, so is that the only one you have? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, well, you know what? Work with me. That we have we have like a hundred or two hundred, three hundred graphing calculators that we can loan out. From what I've been told, I think you can loan it or check it out for the semester. But I will double check. Let's get that done right away, because just to be fair, the problem is those calculators can do things that well. I don't even if you know if you know what it can do. You prob probably kind of. So like most calculators. If you type into a calculator like x squared minus 4, type that into a graphing calculator, what it's going to do is it's going to pull from the memory in the calculator. It's going to say, what was the last value of x that, I, that the calculator has stored? So let's say the calculator had 3, three stored for x, right? It will do 3 squared minus 4. But a CAS system looks at this as a, as a variable. So it would actually allow you to factor this. Like it could do x plus 2, x minus 2. Like it could, it could actually do that. And only computers with computer algebra, or only calculators with computer algebra systems can do that. And it can also do a lot of the calculus that we're going to do by hand. It, it can do. So it's an unfair advantage on a test. All right? <clears throat> and I'm not going to require everyone to have one of those because you're here to learn calculus, right? Not have the <coughs> calculator do it for you. So, and we'll talk about that later. I think there's some philosophical, like, why don't we just use the computer? The computer can do this for us. Like, why don't we just do that, right? We'll, we'll talk about that more later. <coughs> All right, objectives and outcomes. I'm not going to, you can read that. Uh, standard grading scale, A, B, C, D, F are the grades that you can get at the end of the semester. Okay, how is your grade broken down? All right, this is probably the most important part for you is like, how am I going to determine your grade, right? So quizzes and participation. All of these things that I'm talking about, exams, quizzes, homework is all below here. It's, I describe it, but I'll just kind of sum it up. Quizzes, participation, 10%. That can be, I can give you a quiz right now if I wanted to. My Cal 2 class, we walked in, I said, hello, everyone. I handed them their first quiz. Like, they were like, what? Um, you know, so it can be a handout quiz, it can be a group quiz, it can be, hey, here's two problems, do them, you know, do them at home, bring them next time. I can look and say, hey, man, there's a bunch of people absent. Okay, if you're here, you get 100% on this quiz for the day. It can be anything, all right? 10% of your grade. And then the homework that you do at home, outside of class, right? And this is the first time I've ever done this. The homework, you have to hand write your homework, and you have to either take pictures or scan it or do something, you have to condense all your homework into a single PDF file and upload that homework to me. All right, so if you don't know how to do that, like how to take pictures of, of all your pages and condense to a single PDF, um, there is a link here, I, it wasn't working yesterday, there you go. How to create a single PDF from multiple pages of your work. So I go through and I say, hey, look, if you have a scanner, here's how you do it. If you have an iPhone, here's how you do it. If you have an Android phone, here's how you do it. Is anyone taking notes on a tablet? You are, right? OK, so you probably know how to get all your notes into a PDF. I don't care how you do it, but all your handwritten work for your homework needs to be uploaded to me. And there's due dates. I'll show you when we get to the modules, all right? Any questions on that? I'm just looking for an honest effort at the homework. That's what I'm looking for, all right? I want to see how you notate things. I want to see your, your math penmanship, right? I want to see how you write math. I don't want you to just go and copy my homework solutions, right? Because I've already po provided you most of the answers. I don't want you to just sit there and watch my video and copy me. I want to see your notation. I want to see the way you do things, all right? And I also don't want to see what you find on Chegg or all these other places you go to get your answers, right? That's not what this is about. This is about me seeing your work. Got it? That, that part of the um, grade is 10%. Normally, I don't even collect homework because I give you the answers, right? I don't like to babysit. This is college. I don't like to babysit. This is really, this collecting this homework, like I said, is the first time for me. The reason I'm doing it is because I just kind of want to, before the exam comes, I want to be able to like flag anything that's, that's concerning. Like your notation is terrible. Like you're, you keep on lo like not writing the limit. That's going to cost you points on the exam, you know? Like I want to be able to see things that might cost you later. Um, 
Okay, and then you have exams. You have three exams that are worth 18% each, and then the final exam, exam four, is 26%. So that's the grade. No retakes, no test corrections. You have to come in and be ready to take the exam that day, be prepared, and perform. All right? Yes? Do we have to turn in our handwritten notes for the exams as well, or is that just the homework? Do you have to turn in your handwritten notes like for the... when we do the exam, when we take our notes, we, we write out the problems with the Oh, yeah. No, no. When you do your, no, when you do your test here, you're gonna, I'm going to hand you a test paper and pencil, and I'm going to collect it. So that's, that, that's all I need, right? Yeah. Yeah, there won't be any take-home exams or anything here. Everything's going to be in class, sitting down, paper, pencil, good old-fashioned style. Any other questions? Now, here's something I will say unofficially. Historically, I've always allowed students to replace their lowest test grade with the final. Okay? Historically. But I'm not going to tell you that right now. Don't, and it's on video, I'm saying this. You're, I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. Okay? I do not want you to walk into any of, the exam, any of these exams and say, oh, I've got a free pass for one of these. Okay? Don't do that. All right? Because that's the wrong mentality to have. You need to be thinking about it as exam one, I need to do really well to set myself up so that if something goes wrong later, I have that, that cushion I've created for myself, all right? So, and, and, you know, there are other things. I don't just let everyone replace their lowest exam. It's, you've got to show, like, progression, you know? You can't, if you have one bad exam, that's, that's okay, but you've got to show progression. You can't be like, I got a 40 on the first exam, got a 35 on the second exam, you know what I mean? Like, you, you've got to show that it was just a bad day. All right, attendance, you need to be here. Obviously, I'm taking attendance, right? So you, you can't miss more than four classes. You get four free, free passes for class, all right? So if you get a flat tire, miss class, hey, you know, I've got a video. You go watch it. You see what happens, right? You get four, right? You have a death in the family. Got to go out of town. I understand. These things happen. Those are excused absences. But you only still only get four of them because, you know, that's two weeks of class. You can miss two weeks of class, but after that, it's like maybe life is preventing you from doing this. Sometimes life actually gets in the way from you know, us being able to do something. So you know, I'm, a, I'm a human being. I'm not going to be like totally not taking into account what's going on with you. So as long as you're communicating with me, I think uh, we can work something out. Any questions? Yes? Um, and of course, you would know more than me. I thought it was for an excuse. Like I said, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to be, th this, on paper it's four, okay? I've never dropped somebody for not coming to class, all right? I just let them fail, right? I mean, that's normally what happens anyway, right? So, but on paper it's four. Um, four should be enough to cover even the excused ones, right? Like it should be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we want to say, if they're excused, we won't count them fine, but, you know, still, if you miss more than four classes, you're going to be in trouble, I think, in this class, no matter if they're excused or not. It's going to be tough. Um, quizzes, I already told you, behavior. So this, this is where students start getting all pissed off. So I have, I have a zero tolerance policy for cell phones in my class. And also, in terms of, like, laptops, I don't mind if you're using laptops and tablets. But if I see you sitting there and you're like laughing, you know, because the video you're watching is funny, that's a problem, right? So, and, and I can't see those screens, so I'm trusting that if you have a screen open, it's, it's related to the class. That's like a perfect, perfect, no, no, that's okay, that's okay. That's not, you know, we forget to turn, I don't even have mine silenced right now. I'm talking about you sitting there trying to hide from me under your phone, whatever you're doing on your phone, right? That sort of thing. For an hour, 40 minutes, I want you to, you know, disengage from your phone. I know it's a lot to ask, um, even for me, right? I mean, it's, we're so used to it. If you have something really important that you need to take care of, all I ask is that you step out of the room. I don't want you doing it in here. So it, we're free to leave, you know, come and go, right? If you're tired, real tired, don't sleep in here. There's benches, there's tables, there's all sorts of things outside. Just go sleep out there, right? 
You know what I mean? If you're in here, I want you to be paying attention, engaged in the class. Um, and there are consequences, and I make them pretty severe. That way I can always like back off a little bit. Unauthorized use of cell phones and computers. I'll change, I'll add computers if I need to. During class or being disruptive during class will result in me asking you to leave, okay? You'll be counted absent, so you, you, you got one of those four absences now. And then I'm taking 10 points off your next exam. And that's a huge penalty, right? But, you know, those are my rules and, you know, there's a bunch of other Cal 1 classes. If anyone wants to transfer out now, I can, are we okay with those rules? I only say that because I walk by in the hallways and I see other classrooms with the professors up there and their students on their phones and they are okay with it and I'm not. So, does anyone want to be in a class where they are going to be allowed to do that? I can help you get into a class. No? You sure? Okay. If you change your mind, let me know. Soon. All right, tutoring. I always recommend you come to me for help, okay, because especially in calculus, notation, language, just approaches on things are so, are so they're so individualized, right? Like, I'm going to show you my way of doing calculus, and sometimes it'll deviate from even the way the book does it, right? So if you go to a tutor, you're going to have that same issue where they're going to be showing you the way they do it, and there's just a very human aspect to calculus. So I always recommend you come to me first, all right? Now, if you can't make my office hours, you can't set up a special meeting, then there are tutoring, tutoring services available to you. Click on that link and um, you can get to the tutoring lab for the math, all right? All right, almost done. SOBI statement. God, it's 9.27, I swear. I just, okay. Sobe statement. This has to do with, you know, we live in a crazy world, right? So if you see something that looks unusual, someone's acting weird, someone says something, uh, ha, 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 it's a joke, and you're like, well, I don't know if that was a joke. Like, you need to tell someone, right? And I am a person you could tell, talk to, right? If you're uncomfortable with something, please reach out, right? You always see those people on the news afterward, right, being interviewed. Well, you know, yeah, it was kind of weird, or, you know? And you're like, well, why don't you say something, right? So this is what this is all about. This is an inst a college institutional uh, policy here. All right. With that said, we have you know that's a policy. We have to talk about how we're going to handle this classroom. So I'm going to keep the doors locked. All right. I'm going to keep these doors locked, um, and we have to make a decision as a class how we want to handle if somebody gets up and goes to the restroom. There's these little blocks right here that slide to the side that lock, you know, if you keep it there, it'll block the door so it won't lock. Or if these are like this, then, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to shut and lock. So you can go to the restroom. Do we want to have the doors always locked, which would mean you would have to open the doors for people, or do we want to use the block? What do you want? Block? Use the block? Yes? Okay. All right, so we're going to use the block. If you go to the restroom, use a little block. When you come back, slide it back. Understand? Okay. Active shooter. What's the plan? Under, under the desk. So these are obviously two exit points, right? Um, I believe that way there's no exits. Like out that in that way, I believe, is. let me check. This is the new building, so let me just check real quick. Oh, there is an exit down there. Stairwell goes down, okay? And that way there's exits as well. So we can go both ways. Windows. So I was in the, I'm in this classroom on Monday, Wednesday. I already know this is an exit point. This is a kind of last resort exit point because it's not a death fall, but it's on to, it's on to like, you know, bushes and, and uh, grass and stuff. It's not concrete and we're not on the third floor. So it's a survivable drop, right? I like you want to see? The, the problem would be breaching the window. That would be the harder part because these are, these are double pane, like insulated. No? <laughs> You're not going there? Okay, well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you know, if you have an active shooter outside the, outside the classroom right there, right? then do whatever, whatever. So we have, we have a couple options, right? There's fight, there's, you know, hide, run, right? Those are the kind of things, you know, 
we have to talk about this, right? I mean, the last thing you want to do is be curled up in the fetal position underneath your desk when the whole time there was an exit that you didn't even know, right? So we just need to be prepared. Um, also, we have to keep in mind that we're in Texas, right? And in Texas, you can conceal carry without a license. So there could be people in this room right now that are armed. We have no idea. I don't want to know, okay? But we, that is also a possibility. Yes? Is that a thing? Can we conceal carry or open carry on campus? Not open carry. You can't open carry on, you, you can conceal carry, carry. yes. We can. Yeah, that's a Texas law. That's not, that has nothing to do with the college can't stop you from doing that. Now, that's a newer policy. It used to be that you could not conceal carry. Um, it was weird. You couldn't conceal carry in a building, but you could conceal carry outside. Yes? Can't stop. You can't stop. Even with, you can't put a 30.6 on, the, on these windows. Not on the new, not the new laws. Mm -mm. That's right. You can't. So, yeah. So, I mean, that could be a pro. It could be a con. My opinion is that most people who are concealed carry at least used to have a license. So that used to make me feel better that at least the person, you know, but even those courses aren't that, weren't that, you know. Um, and anyone who's going to cause problems, right? Anyone who's going to cause problems is probably not going to conceal carry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're going to come with a plan. Um, hey, how's it going? Yeah, come on sorry in. Sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. Let me see. Just any open seat. Yeah. So. Yeah. If if. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, we never have to deal with this. But you know, just things. There's a, there's a saying, and I could be wrong on this. It says, the saying goes something like this. It's like, luck is preparation meets opportunity. Have you all ever heard that saying, something like that? Luck is preparation meets opportunity. Like, man, we're lucky we survived. If you were prepared, you know, you thought it out, the opportunity arose, you know, you, you took action. So I just don't want it to be where we were just never even thought about it. I've been talking about this since, two, I think, 2000, back when this wasn't even an issue in this country. And my students used to, like, draw, their jaws would drop and they'd be like, why are you talking about this? You know, and I'm just like, it's just the way I was raised, right? My dad always had me, you know, look, you're going to sit in the restaurant, you're going to face the door, you're going to see who comes through the door, you're going to always be looking for exits. You go to a movie theater, you're going to make sure you know where exit points are. I mean, it's not paranoia, it's just like, Preparation, right? Always being ready. So, all right, y'all done? Y'all okay? We good? We move on? <laughs> all right, that's it for the syllabus. Did you initial on there? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. Was anyone not on this list? That look, everyone's here? Okay. All right. So, the modules. I'm going to show you uh, the ebook real quick. The modules. You go to the ebook. You're going to go get registered. Don't pay for anything. I'm getting this thing all squared away. Come on. This is not what it'll 